Hi, I'm Mary Kopsitsky, the CEO of Regolytics. Welcome to this week's Regulatory Roundup. Here are the most interesting alerts from the 5,506 we had last week. And yes, again, 40% of them are still CFPB complaints, but thankfully I have mine filtered so I only see a CFPB complaint if it's against one of the 10 companies I care about. The regulator of the week, yet again, is the SEC. They dropped a bomb on the RIA and investment manager space because they want to enhance and standardize disclosures regarding cybersecurity risk. Hester Pierce hates it because it puts the SEC in the awkward position of managing cyber risk as opposed to the risk for securities and exchanges. Uh, other commissioners love it. CISA loves it. The truth of the matter is, while the SEC is supposed to uh, regulate the buying and selling of financial products, it is an organization that has teeth and consequences if a rule isn't followed. Plus, it has the mandate of regulating pretty much any publicly traded company in the U.S. Uh, with pre-existing exam processes, enforcement actions, policies, and procedures. And if there's anyone that would have teeth in the RIA and investment manager space, and if FINRA's not going to do anything, then I guess it's up to the SEC. The SEC also proposed rules that govern beneficial owner reporting. These seem largely practical and helpful in defining beneficial owners in unique situations like cash settled derivatives, for example. The SEC also this week rejected two Bitcoin products, one from CBOE BZX exchange called the Global X Bitcoin Trust, the second was from NYSE Arky, another Bitcoin ETF. Both were rejected because they didn't effectively showcase that, it had a, that they had a good plan to prevent fraudulent and manipulative acts and practices. One of them notes that if you don't have information with which to, ter to determine if an act is fraudulent and or manipulative, then you don't have the ability to prevent it. So my sense is they didn't have enough controls around who they were onboarding and what their customers would be doing. The topic of the week is digital assets, starting with Russian sanctions. This week, the FCA of the UK and the Bank of England reiterated that all firms, including those operating in the crypto space, are to comply with sanctions against Russia. Once again, there should be no question, if you have business in Russia, stop now before every single regulator in the world comes after you, because they will. Also this week in the US, the president passed an executive order outlining what is expected from the various agencies in regards to the responsible development of crypto. Some agencies got quite excited about hearing this, including one we haven't heard from in a while, the Department of Labor, which has raised its flag in regards to fiduciary duties and cryptocurrencies in the ERISA space. We all remember the DOL fiduciary rule that was ultimately replaced by more appropriate financial regulators. So let's make sure that the lesson here is learned that when the DOL, DOL starts getting worried about workers' pensions and retirement accounts, they're not afraid to force the issue until the other financial regulators act. They're quite excited by this executive order, as you can imagine, and have already issued a compliance assistance release for retirement plans to follow. For those of you following crypto, there has been a crackdown by the FCA on crypto ATMs. They just shut one down that was illegally operating, and they sent out an investor warning, let everyone know that no one not even any of the companies legally registered to use crypto in the, in the UK is allowed to have crypto ATM. So if you happen to see one in the UK, which means England, Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland, it's illegal. The states were also busy with crypto this week. Colorado is contemplating allowing security token offerings. Tennessee is thinking of allowing the government there to invest in cryptocurrency, blockchain, and NFTs. And speaking of Tennessee, they join Hawaii this week in being the next two states to start up a blockchain task force to look at emerging tech and how it can help each individual state. 
For those of you following cannabis, New Jersey is moving along in its legalization of recreational marijuana use, and they have reviewed a number of applications and given feedback, and so far, rejections are the only ones that have gone out. There are so many alerts this week worthy of mentioning, but I want to be respectful of your time, so the last is for those of you in my neck of the woods. New Jersey and New York are in a big fight. In 1953, they created the Waterfront Commission that was built to fight crime on the Hudson River, which of course runs between the two states on the west of Manhattan. So I guess New Jersey wants out and New York is suing New Jersey to keep them in. Uh, Nothing like a little regulatory fight club to keep things fun. So that's it this week for Regolytics. We have the most comprehensive, customizable, coherent regulatory alerts tool in the world. Come have a demo and see how lots of companies are transforming the way they do compliance with this kind of transparency. See you next Wednesday.